Good morning, everyone. It's Christine. How are you doing today? So I wanted to talk about this weekend. We were at Travel Baseball. We had gone down to Arkansas and we had stayed at a hotel. And then yesterday morning, I witnessed something that I wish I had known 16 years ago when I had my son, when he was younger and stuff that you don't think about. And when you go through trainings through the years, things happen as a parent and you don't know how to handle it. So yesterday morning when I was eating breakfast with my 16 year old, there was a family, a young couple there, and they had a little girl. And the little girl was probably about three or three years old, I wanna say, and she was at the table and she was eating and she had a little sister and she kept crawling around the floor and mom was just following her and stuff. But dad did something that most people don't think about and I think he just didn't know how to handle it because he was young, he's got two kids, they're traveling and they're in a hotel. So me and my son are eating and all of a sudden, the dad's frustration level just shot up. It shot up so quick. He got after the little girl, you could tell he was frustrated, but he did not know how to handle it appropriately. As a trained person, I sat there and thought, man, when I was his age, I don't even know how I would have handled it. The girl kept spilling her cereal, but the one thing he didn't do that our kids need to learn is communication. He did not communicate to the little girl that it was frustrating him. So all of a sudden now you've got an adult, that's the dad, who's frustrated with a three-year-old because she's in an environment that they're normally not in. She spilled her cereal multiple times, but you know what? He did not give her one warning. So I felt bad for the little girl because all of a sudden he was like, you need to stop doing that now. You keep spilling your cereal. And I'm just like, hello, we're in a public place. And you didn't even tell her that it was bugging. You didn't say, hey, you know what? Do you need help with that? He should have role modeled for her like, hey, this is how you eat your cereal. This is what I'd like you to do. You know, accidents happen. Sometimes cereal does fall off the table or fall over onto the table but the dad didn't even role model. Knowing what I know now, I wish everyone reads 123 Magic. It is a great book. It gives the kids warnings. You can role model, like with me, if I'm at the center and the kids are in the blocks and they have them all over the place and I walk by and I know they're supposed to be picking up because I hear the teacher tell them and they're ignoring the teacher, I walk by and I say, hey, so-and-so, that's one. Could you please pick up the blocks? If I get to two, I'm gonna give you a warning again. And if I get to three, then there's consequences. Or I go in and say, hey, I show them. If it's my younger classroom, if it's the twos or the ones, I'll go in and show the kids what I expect them to do. They don't know what you expect unless you verbally tell them specifically. It's just with adults making goals. Kids have to be told specifically what you want them to do because sometimes they have no clue what you're saying. If you tell them to go sit down, well, where are they sitting? Are they sitting in the rug at center time? Are they sitting in their... Um, or if they'll go to the table. There's so many places in a classroom you could sit and you told them to go sit down. They're like, well, I don't even know where I'm going, so how can I sit down? Did I just sit down right here on the floor? And kids will do it because you specifically told them. It happens all the time too with my adults. Sometimes I do bulletin board contests or I give them directions on the bulletin board and I come out and it didn't look like what I envisioned because I was not specific. So I want everyone to read the book, One, Two, Three, Magic. What I do wanna show you is something I got from my math center. This is super cool. Um, one of my classrooms had won this and they had um, ordered it and this is for math and this is for preschoolers. It is for five and up as long as it's facilitated, we are good. And it is called monkey balancing. So it's a balance. Usually we do balance in science, but this is a super cool game and it's timed for 15 minutes and it's math. And I don't know if you can see this, but it has math cards right here and it teaches the kids how many monkeys to put on each side and then you count them and add them. And then last of all, we, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna make this week for Father's Day. We are gonna make, this is what I ordered for all the classrooms. We've never made these before. I think they're kinda, I kinda laugh because these are like when we were kids, but we're making the cooler sleeves, the koozies. So we have blank cooler sleeves and the girls, I believe we're gonna use our paint markers. I have to ask them yet, but we're making all the parents cooler sleeves. So this is, well, not all the parents, all the dads for Father's Day. Every year we do something different. One year we did an apron for grilling. Um, so we've done hammers before where we kids have decorated the hammers that said Happy Father's Day. So I hope you guys got some great ideas. Please read the book, One, Two, Three Magic. Like I said, there's things that I see now that I wish I'd known when my kids were little, but the communication and being specific is so important. For raising legends, they're our superhumans, they're our future. We need to teach them communication. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.